before watching the video don't forget to subscribe the channel and enable bell notification to never miss an update from us hello everyone and welcome to entry channel this is ashma shukla and in this video we're going to talk about daily current affairs that is daily news events in this video we're going to talk about the news events in a bit of detail in certain pointers and in certain pointers we might go with uh, only one liners depending on what is important for examination Right, so in this video, we will be taking only the examination point of view perspectives of all the news events. And the news events have been covered basically for 28th and 29th of October, uh, as much as we could in the video. Right, so we are going to begin. Uh, but before we begin, for all those who are regular viewers or all those who like the video, please do like the session and do subscribe to the channel. And for those who want to practice the questions, you can go to Entry app and it has free questions for all of you to practice on. And for seven days, uh, Entry channel is giving free, Entry app is giving free subscription for all the courses. So you can take the maximum benefits of it and see if that helps you. Right. So we'll be moving forward with our segment now. The first news event, two new Ramsar sites have been designated in India and the new Ramsar sites are Kabartal Wetland in Bihar and Asan Conservation Reserve in Uttarakhand. Asan Conservation Reserve is the first uh, Ramsar site of Uttarakhand and Kabartal Wetland is in Bihar which is also known as a Kavar Jheel. Uh, Kabartal Wetland has another name all, uh, called Kavar Jheel and it is a home to five very important endangered species of which three are vultures. Now uh, you might have uh, seen in the last video that we have that uh, we were talking about uh, India setting up rules and regulations for vultures and uh, centers have been established for conservation of vultures and how vultures are very endangered. We have talked about all of that in the previous video. So all those who want to know about the recent steps and uh, how drugs have been banned, uh, any animal drug which does not suit vulture will not be approved. That is the kind of regulation that we have now. So all about that has been discussed in the previous video. Now, uh, for all those students who find that what exactly are Ramsar sites and stuff like that. Now, Ramsar is not exactly a name or an acronym. No, it is a city name. It is a name of the city where the, uh, you know, the agreement of wetlands Treaty of Wetlands was signed. So the treaty was signed in Ramsar, which is in Iran, and it is an Iranian city. Ramsar is an Iranian city. Now, uh, all the wetlands of international importance are given the site or, or given the title of Ramsar sites. That means they are now international wetlands or wetlands of international importance. Right. So Uttarakhand's first Ramsar site is the Sun Conservation Reserve and the recent one is of Bihar. Apart from that, in the treaty, there is something known as Montreal Record. Now what exactly is a Montreal Record is any wetland which is facing any sort of danger, maybe because there is increase in pollution or there is increase in population or there is increase in uh, human activities or human involvement or there is something or the other which is harming the wetland then those wetlands are included in the Montreal record right of India there are two wetlands which have been included in Montreal record and they are Kilodia National Park of Rajasthan and Loktak Lake of Manipur both of them are endangered wetlands that is they are in a danger of being eliminated Right, danger of being eliminated as a wetland, not from the site, but as a wetland. So uh, those are included in Montreal records. So you must know where is Kaldeo National Park, where is Loktak Lake, and what is Montreal record. Uh, Ramsar site is of Ramsar is a city of which country, and in, uh, about the latest Ramsar sites of India as well. Right. Moving forward, IFSC has approved two new regulations. IFSC is International Financial Service Center Authorities and two regulations which have been, uh, have been approved. International Financial Service Center Authorities Bullion Exchange Regulations and Financial Service Center Authorities Global In-House Center Regulation. Now you might have seen, you might have heard in current affairs in, of the last three months that India's first bullion um, exchange or 
bull decks has been released by mcx mcx has released in the recent one liners video also we had covered that uh, bull decks is the first uh, bullion index of india but what exactly is a bullion index or bullion market now just like we have a sensex in that similar terms bullion market is one where there is buyers and sellers of gold and silver uh, when we talk about the stock market we are talking about companies we are trading companies we are trading the shares similarly when we are trading of gold and silver that comes as bull decks right or that is the bullion market next electricity access in india and benchmarking distribution utilities report has been released recently and this report was released by niti ayog niti ayog has recently released this uh, index now if we talk about this index in a further manner uh, 90, uh, as per the report 92% of the customers had reported the overall availability of electricity within the 50 meters of their premise and 85% of customers had reported to have a metered electricity connection 66% of those who were surveyed were satisfied these are the statistics that are important and who has released it that is important apart from that uh, much of the factors are not going to be considered from the examination perspective DST IIEST solar PV hub has been inaugurated in Shibpur West Bengal and um, it was going to provide a great boost for eastern and northeastern regions what we need to know is that where has it been inaugurated that is Shibpur in West Bengal and what is it associated with they are going to give out the knowledge of Uh, the solar energy and the research is ongoing the developments that are going on solar photovoltaics and uh, pv modules that are there so basically it's about a knowledge hub of solar energy and it has been inaugurated at chipur west bengal that is the only thing that's going to matter moving forward ordinance to constitute air quality management commission in uh, north uh, north capital so national capital region So in NCR region, Air Quality Management Commission, as we talked about, I guess uh, in the last or the last last video, that um, central government is going to set up a commission for air pollution. So for that, ordinance has been passed or promulgated by the President of India. What is an ordinance? An ordinance is a decision which is uh, moved when there is no parliament sitting. so without the agreement or when there is no parliament the president can make the regulation which is going to account just as an act word but that needs to be approved within 6 months of the release right that is an ordinance and president of india has promulgated an ordinance why because even though the house is not in the sitting even then we know that uh, at this time due to stable burning being the major reason of air quality downgradation uh, it is going to be increased right now and the stable burnings are going to increase as the moment because this is the season of it so therefore ordinance has been passed and maybe uh, now in the next 6 months it is going to be approved by both the houses currently as per the ordinance what are what is there is that there is going to be a chairperson to that commission then there is going to be members from the state of punjab haryana delhi up and rajasthan the five states delhi and the surrounding four states because they are the ones that account to it right so those states which account to the pollution of it and those who suffer from it only those states are going to be the part of the commission air quality management commission these are the five states that are going to be a part of it very important to know and then there's going to be members from isro also and members from central pollution control board also the two organizations are going to have members and there's going to be total of five states who are going to be the member of the commission with one chairperson as well apart from that there are going to be three sub committees to this commission that is monitoring and identification research and development and safeguarding and enforcement segment the basic target is going to be that bring down, bring the air quality index to a better upgraded form rather than it going down as the usual now uh, when this is going to be uh, made this commission will be constituted or this committee is going to be constituted and with this the replacement of environment pollution environment pollution prevention and 
control authority is going to be removed or it will be replacing this environment pollution prevention and control authority which was set up in 1986 in 1986 it was set up under the environment protection act and its basic purpose was to bring our monitor the graded response action plan of delhi now since this committee is going to perform the same or nearly the same function this is going to be replaced and epca is considered as a very powerful one just like government of india's powerful epc or this authority was very powerful for taking their decisions so it can take suo moto decisions as well this had the authority to take suo moto decisions right now moving forward kerala is the first state in india to fix a, a minimum support price for vegetables uh, after the central government had took this major decision in which it had uh, given a free hand to the private sector to interfere in the uh, in agriculture segment so when this had taken place at that time Kerala government has decided to fix MSPs because MSPs decision has been taken by by the central government in the recent bill which was released. Like right? three bills were passed, in which one of them was this? Now base price as per this new MSP base price is going to be twenty percent more than the production cost of vegetables, and under the scheme, all yields will be sold under the brand name Jeevani Kerala Farm Fresh Fruits and Vegetables. crops are going to be procured from farmers through vegetables and fruits promotion council kerala and horti crop and uh, what is going to be there is that uh, local self government bodies are also going to correlate with the circulation mm -hmm. and procurement of vegetables right now uh, what is msp going to do minimum support price uh, is going to be on 16 agricultural items and how is it going to help is that it helps farmers in bringing the right amount in the market right amount of money for that particular crop in the market and therefore farmers were very resistant that why this has happened so seeing that kerala government has done for itself or for the members of its states right next feni bridge is going to be completed by december 2020 as per the recent declaration so if we talk about feni bridge it's 1.8 km long bridge first statistic second it is in sabram in india with ramgarh in bangladesh it links sabram and ramgarh sabram is in india and ramgarh is in bangladesh so it is a bridge between india and bangladesh and if we talk about uh, between which cities then it is between sabram and ramgar sabram is in tripura so you can say if we talk about states it links tripura with ramgar over which river is it built feni is the river's name the name feni bridge is over the river named feni feni river originates in south tripura, tripura district and muhuri river is also known as little feni now if we talk about this the construction of this bridge had begun in 2010 so after 10 years finally it is going to be complete as per the uh, as per the news released recently now uh, initially as i talk over here water sharing disputes were there between india and pakistan in 1958 over the any river water so why was this dispute there uh, there were several arguments with the water rights just like we had on in this river so since the tributaries were there so some the international organization had to interfere now over here feni river origin is in tripura and uh, at that time it was east pakistan right so that was when there were issues that were created about the water sharing and how it needs to be shared so pakistan had reported that india is trying to draw out water for irrigation projects and due to that water is not reaching to us so uh, as per that we had an indian declaration that feni river has been added to its mandate in the 36 jrc meeting right now UN Global Climate Action Award was given recently and this was given to global himalayan expedition and why was this given it is given for combating climate change amid the covid 19 pandemic so although the pandemic is going on even after this pandemic uh, this organization is uh, working on manages the impacts expeditions and it is also setting up solar panels 
setups for solar energy generation of solar energy in the remote villages it manages the impacts expeditions it's an organization of the people and uh, it sets up solar energy organizations it is uh, the corporation or Indian corporation which strengthens the technology it works for improving the tourism sector also it works for uh, upgrading the village sector also so as a whole it works towards the upliftment of that particular organization right so therefore it has been awarded with UN global climate award and these awards what do they honor just like we talked about, it talks about solar energy and it talks about bringing up tourism and stuff like that. So that comes under sustainable development goals. And SDGs, those organizations which work for SDGs, those are honored with UN Global Climate Action Award. Sustainable development goals, if we talk about, they were set up uh, in the past. Now, sustainable development goals and there is a Paris Climate Change Agreement also. Paris Climate Change Agreement. So both of them work towards climate change and if any organization works towards as per Paris climate exchange or as per SDG, those are honored with this, right? Next, Krishi Upad Mandi Amendment Bill 2020 has been passed recently as an emergency. Just like in Kerala, we saw that um, uh, in Kerala, uh, what has happened is that they have passed the MSP Bill. Similarly, Krishi Upad Mandi has been uh, passed by Chhattisgarh Assembly and it has launched the concept of deemed market and it has made electronic payment systems very necessary. Now, what is the concept behind this bill? The reason is that since these latest uh, farms bill were released, farmers or agriculture produce market was kind of in a confusion about the stand of government. So to strengthen that, the state governments are taking steps right now. As per the bill, there's going to be deemed market and electronic payments are going to be made better. Now, what is a deemed market? Now, deemed market will give state agencies the control over the market. So it's going to have a cold storage. Deemed markets will have cold storage. It will have silos, warehouses, electronic trading, transaction platforms. Everything is going to be there. And via this, the private sector entry is going to be limited. What do we mean by limited? That is, that if any uh, private sector uh, wants to enter into that segment or into the farming segment, or wants to have a direct deal with the farmers, then it will have to submit its accounts, it will have to submit its stocks, it will have to uh, state all the chances it has of uh, or the scrutiny it has so that the government can be sure that this private entity is worth entering. Right. So the basic purpose is to limit the corporate sector to only the better ones reaching it rather than bringing the uncertainty in the lives of farmers as well. Right. Now, there are very much amount of small and marginal farmers in the state and therefore this deemed money market and electronic trading is going to upgrade them to a better rate. Right. Now. We are talking about farm bills, farm bills, farm bills. Last video also we had talked about it. So uh, what exactly are the decisions that were there? First of all, over the government managed Mondays or ENAMs. Over those, the monopoly of government was removed. Then MSPs were removed or it was like farmers can enter into direct contracts with the private sector also. And agribusiness was allowed to stock as much as they want. That is Essential Commodities Act or the certainty was removed from the agriculture sector. That is, they can stock as much as they want, right? So, government does not want to interfere and that is why these three regulations were released of which a separate video has already been made by Entry Channel and uh, basically by me for this particular segment, right? So, you can go for that and to improve that states are working. So, over here, we have took over DMAM the markets and electronic payments being made necessary. Next, a few one-liners. NPCI, National Payments Corporation of India, has launched Rupee Festive Carnival, giving huge discount to festive uh, Rupee card owners. And
and uh, a direct port entry facility has been launched at BO Chitambranar port in Tutikoran. Now over here you can uh, find a few questions which are going to be regarding the port itself at where is this port or VO Chitambranar port is in which city so it is in Tutikoran, right which is the uh, where has the direct port entry facility been launched that can also be asked how is the direct port entry going to help it will allow direct movement of containers from mills to the container terminal and that is going to be round the clock Right. There's no going to be an intermediator between them. The containers from mills can go directly to the uh, container terminal. Right. Now, Victor Banerjee has won the Best Actor Award in the Second Regional Award for Joseph Born in Grace at Ontario International Film Festival. Now, over here, you can expect a question. First of all, who has won the Best Actor Award at Ontario International Film Festival? Second one is, uh, um, jo who was the actor in Joseph Born in Grace? And the third one can be the other way around. Now, meeting of trade and economy ministers of Shanghai Cooperation Organization or SEO countries was held recently and virtually, and it was hosted by India or India had organized this. Right? SEO countries have eight members, just to be sure on or be on the shorter side. There are eight members, India being India and Pakistan being the recent members of it. Now, over here, I'll be winding up the segment. And for all those who want to practice, you can go to Entry App. There's an app where uh, we have a lot of questions for you to practice. And for seven days, it's giving free access to all the courses. So you can download the app, and it's in all languages. It's in English also, it's in Hindi also, and in regional languages also, Tamil, Telugu. So you can go to the app, find the questions, practice them, and secure your selection. So with this, over here my segment ends. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope this video was helpful to all of you. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye, take care and have a great day ahead.